Hi guys, Jordan here, filmmaker and video editor, and today we're gonna to be going over my favorite custom keyboard shortcuts that don't exist by default inside of Premiere Pro. And then afterwards, we're gonna be taking a look at a piece of gear that I use to take those shortcuts and boost my editing speed up to the next level. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end. I love editing videos, but sometimes it can take a really, really long time. That's why editors like us are always looking to save time and edit faster, and why keyboard shortcuts are always a topic of conversation, because they let you do exactly the same thing as you were doing before, but usually in just one or two clicks. But here's the thing, out of all the things that you can do inside of Premiere Pro, most of them don't have custom keyboard shortcuts that are already set up for you, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it yourself. By hitting Control-Alt-K or Command-Option-K on a Mac, you can bring up your custom keyboard shortcuts menu, and you can start to bind your own individually. And going through the list, there seems like an insane number of different things that you can actually do. So what I'm gonna do right now for you is give you my personal favorite custom keyboard shortcuts that you can set up right now to start editing faster. So let's start it off with number one, Keyframe Bezier. I think most people would be really surprised by the number of things you can actually set up as a keyboard shortcut. When I say you can set up almost anything, I mean almost anything. Like you can highlight a keyframe and with just one keyboard press, you can set that to be a bezier instead to help give it a natural ramp in. And that might sound super niche, but you gotta keep in mind that most of the work that I do is working with screen recordings where you gotta be zooming in, panning around and showing what's going on and doing that literally sometimes hundreds of times in the same project. And it might not seem like a big deal if you have to do it just once or twice to be able to highlight the keyframes in question, then right click and then go down to select, no, no, hover, hover over it, there we go, and then go over, no, and then go over to set a bezier. Doing that 110 times in a project is gonna drive me insane. So it's really nice just to be able to look up a keyframe bezier and set that to something like Alt B. Now just highlight, hit Alt B, and that's it. But to be honest with you, I actually don't use a shortcut for keyframe bezier. I actually do two separate keyframes, one for easy ease in and one for easy ease out for more specificity. This just helps to get an even more smooth ramp when you're setting up manual positions. Number two, synchronize audio. For a lot of the projects that I do, I need to sync up the audio and the video separately because I've captured them separately. Multiple times now for every single project, I need to manually line up the audio and the video, which can be kind of challenging. Thankfully, Premiere has this function called synchronize, which basically lets you highlight the audio and the video separately, right click, and then choose synchronize audio. And then you can go through a bunch of different menu settings to be able to synchronize them to your liking and boom, it's automatically done for you. This saves you a lot of time, but the problem is, is that you can't just highlight everything in your timeline and sync synchronize it all in one click. You need to do it one at a time. So highlight the video and audio, right click, synchronize audio, choose the menu settings, highlight the audio and video, right click, choose synchronize after quickly forgetting where it was. After a while, this can get pretty tedious. And if you've got like 20, 30, 40 different shots that you need to all synchronize, it's just gonna start to weigh you down. So this is why I like to set up a keyboard shortcut specifically for synchronize. Just go to your keyboard shortcuts menu here and search for synchronize. Here in this location, you can click and actually manually key in the combination that when you press it, it'll do that synchronizing process for you automatically. For me, Alt and S work great. Obviously S is already a keyboard shortcut, but a little bit of a tip here, if you choose something like Control or Shift, usually a lot of the times, no matter what key you press, those are already associated with other keyboard shortcuts. But by choosing Alt or Control, if you're using a Mac like I am, you're nine times out of 10 not gonna run into a conflict of interest, so you can just go ahead and know that you're not gonna kick off any other shortcuts. If you're ever worried, this little icon down in the corner will tell you whether or not you're gonna bump any other keyboard shortcuts by going through with this combination. So now that that's all done, all you have to do to synchronize your audio is highlight the audio in question and click Alt S. And because these default menu settings are okay for me, I'm just gonna hit enter and do the process literally this fast to be able to synchronize all of my clips. And number three, set favorite clips. Now, Premiere Pro doesn't have a favorites option like other programs do, like Final Cut Pro, for example, but that doesn't mean that you can't set it up yourself. What I like to do is I like to set up a keyboard shortcut to be able to change your label color automatically. Yes, you can actually do that within your keyboard shortcut menu. There's actually an entire section just for label colors. So if you wanted to set your favorite clips to be something like red, for example, just set up a keyboard shortcut for the red option to something like Alt F. Now, as you're going through your clips, either in your project panel or in your timeline, you can just click that keyboard shortcut and it'll automatically set the label color for you without having to right click and dive into menus. 
So what good does that do then? Well, what you can do now here is you can sort by label color by clicking this dropdown within your project panel. And now that these are all clumped together, you can just highlight all of the red clips and then right click and create a new bin from this selection of clips. Name it whatever you want, favorites, selects, but now they're all together and organized in a neat little package. But you can actually take this even one more step further. You can click on a video file in your project panel and bring it up in your source monitor. And when you actually set in and out points from here, you can click and drag it onto the timeline. But if you click and drag it back into your project panel, it actually duplicates the clip. The great thing about this now is you can set this as a label color. Then when you sort by label color, you don't have to worry about duplicates with similar file names, putting things out of order. All of your favorites are organized as they are. Now, I know that some of you might be saying, well, hey, that's great, but I don't really like having to hit two buttons like Alt S or Alt B or Alt F to be able to have these keyboard shortcuts. I really just like hitting one button. How do I do that? Well, this piece of editing gear has really helped me to be able to take these keyboard shortcuts and maximize them to their fullest potential. This is the Logitech G600 and I love this to death. It's got 12 programmable macro keys right by where your thumb sits and then two more up by your index finger. What I really love about an option like this is that it's basically taking your keyboard and giving a lot of that functionality over to your right hand, which is usually just used for pointing and clicking and then the odd right click here and there. It's usually not doing too much apart from moving around. This takes a bunch of those keys and lets you move your mouse and choose something at the same time while keeping your left hand available for things like stopping and starting your footage or moving in and out of your timeline. It just gives you some more flexibility and functionality. One of the best benefits of a mouse like this is that you can take an extra long keyboard combination, something way over the top like this, for example, and make it so simple that it's literally just one button click. The software to actually assign these custom keys is pretty intuitive. And you get the added benefit of not just button combinations, but also system functions, like moving between windows or minimizing everything. Now, to be honest, there's nothing special about the Logitech G600 over any other mouse. It's just the cheapest option that I really found that has the same kind of functionality that I was looking for. I've left some links down below if you wanted to check out this specific model, as well as some other options that in my opinion are pretty much identical for somewhat of a similar price point. But just to be 100% transparent, those are Amazon affiliate links. If you purchase through those, I would receive a commission for that sale. Just make sure that's stated up front. But also I wanna say, don't just buy something because I say that I like it. If you think that it's really gonna help you edit a little bit faster, then please go for it. I stand by that I've really liked the experience and that it's helped me, but I'd never wanna make you guys think that a piece of gear is actually gonna make you a better editor. It'll just help you to have more flexibility to do what you already know how to do. But in case you do find something like this helpful, I'm gonna show you exactly which keys do what in of Premiere Pro for me so that you know how exactly I choose to edit. I think it really helps me to edit faster, but that's a personal preference and a personal taste based off of the kind of videos that I make and what I find myself doing most often. But here we go. The G9 slot is the selection tool. G10 is the cut tool. G11 is the slip tool. G12 is rolling edit. G13 is select everything to the right. G14 is select everything to the left. G15 is ripple delete. G16 is enable and disable for any clip. G17 is my favorite clips. G18 is easy ease out. And G19 is easy ease in. And finally, lastly, G20 is save. Always, please, save your work. And up here on the top are the two keys that I use probably most often. I've got these set up to be undo and redo so that in case I screw up somehow, which I happen to do quite a lot, I can easily take back that action and get right back on track editing in less than a second. But guys, that's just been a quick look at some of my favorite custom keyboard shortcuts. And I actually found this really interesting going through because as I was going through the list of options that you can set as custom keyboard shortcuts, I found some things that I really didn't even know were functions inside of Premiere. I actually learned something just by going through that list. So if you think you can too, feel free to just hit Control Alt K or Command Option K and take a look. See if there's something that's there that you never actually knew existed. But that's it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you thought that it was actually helpful. And if you think I earned your subscription, then please subscribe and click the bell icon to be able to be notified every single time I post a new video. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'm so excited to see you next time.